Over the ages, evolution has produced a wide variety of different forms of life. Life started out simple with only single-celled organisms, but over time, complex organisms like plants, snails, birds, and even dinosaurs evolved. Looking back at the evolution of life, there seems to be some sort of drive towards more complexity. That suggests that there is some sort of predictability to evolution. Some very good inventions during the course of evolution, like the eye, evolved multiple times. So the eye turned out to be a very good evolutionary idea. However, there have also been a number of highly unpredictable events that have shaped the evolution of life in very important ways. For example, the meteor that crashed into Earth at the end of the Cretaceous wiped out the dinosaurs. And if that had not happened, then the mammals would probably never have flourished the way that they did. Events like this suggest that evolution is not predictable and is very much influenced by unpredictable events. Now, in 1989, a famous paleontologist called Stephen Jay Gould, he proposed the following. He said, what if he would take the tape of life and rewind it all the way back to the start of life? The question then is, what would happen? Would we see again birds and dinosaurs and humans, or would we see something very different? This is the question that I'm trying to answer in this project. The question of whether evolution is predictable or not. Before I explain how I am studying this question, let's first think about how evolution works. In any population of organisms, there is variation. Part of this variation is caused by differences in the DNA, which means that these differences will be inherited by the offspring. All of this variation in both looks and in DNA is random. Some individuals have a better chance of surviving and leaving offspring than other individuals. This is what we call selection, and selection is very much not random. Because selection is not random, we may be able to predict what will happen during the course of evolution. Now to study this, I do experiments in the laboratory using a very simple organism called a roundworm. We know a lot about these organisms, and we know that there are a lot of mutants, individuals that have changes in their DNA that cause problems. One example of being sick in this worm is caused by a process that goes on in the cells of these roundworms. Now what happens in a healthy cell is that there is a gene that makes sure that this specific substance is removed. This way, this substance cannot cause any problems and this worm is healthy. However, we have a, a mutant in which this system doesn't work. So the protein is present, it produces this substance, but the gene that is supposed to fix the problem is broken. So that means that the substance is not removed and stays in the cell. What happens then is that it binds to a different protein, which then binds to DNA and causes many problems. And because we understand this system very well, we can predict that there are three ways in which the worm can solve this problem. The first one is by fixing the original mutation. This, however, is very difficult, like fixing a complicated machine that is broken. The second possibility is by changing the protein to which the substance binds. This is also very difficult. There is only one very specific change in this protein that will solve the problem. Any other change in that protein will make the worm even more sick than it was before. Now the third option is by breaking the gene that produces this, the toxic substance in the first place. And this is easy. Breaking a gene can be done in many different ways. So all you need to do is take a shotgun and blast away. So the prediction then is that if we culture this worm over many generations in the lab, we will see changes in this protein number three to solve the original problem of this sick worm. So here we have a system where evolution is completely predictable. So what we want to know now is whether evolution is still predictable when we change the circumstances under which these worms live. So for example, 
we can lower the temperature or we can add salt, which the worms also do not like. And then we check whether evolution will still find the same solutions to these problems. By studying the predictability of evolution in systems like this, we hope to get more general answers to what makes evolution predictable in nature. Eventually, we hope to get closer to an answer to the question whether our existence here on Earth was inevitable and predictable or whether it was just a lucky coincidence.